smartphones are changing. And not in the sort of standard, slightly faster than last year, and with a marginally better camera way that ends up defining so many popular handsets. With the fresh crop of 2017 flagships just beginning to land, we're seeing the arrival of a new direction for one of the most familiar, fundamental components of a smartphone's hardware makeup, the display. And while it may not turn your day-to-day -day interactions with your phone on their head, changes are coming that threaten to tweak the way we hold our phones, operate them, especially one-handed, and consume media. With the LG G6, the manufacturer invites us into the new world of the 918 screen. For years now, the standard 916 display has dominated smartphone sales, even Apple reluctantly joined the party, but this year we're finally seeing the companies that make our favorite phones start trying something new. And while LG may be the first, all the leaks we've been seeing of upcoming hardware certainly suggest it won't be the last. This new extra wide or extra tall shape for the G6's screen is a big part of what makes this phone so big, but that's far from the only design worth paying attention to. We've got a sleek new look with no appreciably camera bump, a premium, glass encased metal body that trades its removable battery for water resistance, and built-in wireless charging for some view. Add to that things like a no-compromise, full-resolution wide-angle camera, and Google's latest software and services, and we've got what looks, on paper, at least like one of the most compelling new smartphones done so far this year. Does the LG G6 deliver on all of its potential, or will it follow more use of the G5 and its modular hardware, a possibly good idea, but one quite thoroughly ruined by some bad decisions about its implementation and marketing? Let's waste no more time before getting deep into what you can expect from one of the year's first big-name flagship phones. In the box, LG G6, USB Type-C to standard cable, quick charger, SIM tool. The LG G series has long been one defined by its design. From the G2, the first to drop the old Optimus branding through the G4 meant lots of unusual rear-mounted hardware buttons, including volume locker. And even though LG returned more traditional volume controls for the G5, the rear power button remained, while upgrading to pick up an integrated fingerprint scanner. But with the LG G6, we're looking at a company that has decided enough with the past. Sure, we've still got that rear power button, but to a very large extent, LG has decided to tackle the look and feel of the G6 from the ground up. And as it would happen, that's a very good thing. We're going to pivot back around to LG's crazy widescreen display in just a moment, taking a closer look at what it offers and why, but it's impossible to talk about the design of the G6 without putting the phone screen front and center. While this isn't a phone that strives to offer a stunning buzzless or otherwise over-the-edge display, it's still one that's clear catching if only because of the spectacular job that screen does at filling the phone's face. LG quotes an 8% screen to body ratio, and while that's not quite the highest we've ever seen, thanks to entries from companies like Xiaomi, it still goes a very long way towards making it feel like you're not so much holding a phone with a screen on it, but that you're just holding a screen. Little details like how the curves at the corners of the display mirror the curves of the phone itself really help sell that, that illusion. The rest of the G6's body is similarly refined. A solid-feeling metal frame helps you get a good grip on the handset, and while the phone's back looks like brushed metal, as soon as you pick it up you'll realize it's protected by a pane of glass. Yet while the G6 is glass front and back, it's not a model that suffers a lot as a result. The phone still feels surprising dual, and resists showing off stray fingerprints, helping to keep it looking as premium as possible. Speaking of durability, LG blesses the G6 with an IP68 rating for dust and water resistance. That's been a long time coming, and while it's hard to get overly excited about when so many other phones do the same thing, it's still fantastic LG step up to join the rest of the pack. We used the G6 in conditions ranging from a light drizzle to a downpour. While the phone showed some of the expected touchscreen glitches when actively in water, it also suffered no permanent damage. LG's flagship phones have played around with screen sizes for years, usually bouncing around the low to mid 5-inch space. With the G6, though, we step up to a panel that's solidly in for split territory, 
though you might not appreciate that to actually use the phone. The G6 is built around an all-new 5.7-inch LCD screen with a 2K class 1440x2880 resolution, rounded off corners, and featuring an extra-wide 918 aspect ratio. We could spend this entire review just talking about the unusual new display LG chose to use on the G6, what's changed, why that matters, and how it all ultimately impacts how you'll use the phone. But because there's a lot more to this smartphone than just its screen, we're going to try and show some restraint. First, though, we've got to talk about the shape. This 919 aspect is arguably more properly called 1, 2, that is, the screen's exactly twice as tall as it is wide. Your typical 916 phone screen, by comparison, is a bit too short to have the same said about it. This means several things for how you use the phone. If you're watching regular 16, 9 video on it, you're going to see some black bars on the sides. And while it's easy to associate such bars with the feeling of I am watching this content on screen, they can actually work the G6. For one, there's enough wiggle room such that you don't have 16, 9 video right up against those rounded corners, losing some pixels in the process. And the screen's also wide enough that you can call up your virtual on-screen Android buttons without them appearing on top of and blocking your video. The situation with apps is a little tricky, as few are explicitly designed to be used on a screen like this. Thankfully, LG includes an easy-to-use settings panel that lets you dictate how apps are scaled to the screen. And if you don't like how one option looks, it's simple to switch to another. Really, though, we didn't run into many issues with how apps use the screen, though it's very nice to know that LG has gotten ahead of the potential problem, all the same. The main downside is that you can only adjust the scaling for downloaded apps, not pre-installed software like most of your Google titles. How about those curved corners? Unlike the way most smartphone screens are perfect rectangles, LG rounds off the corners of the G6's panel. They're not perfect 90 degree arcs, and we have to admit that our first reaction to seeing them was a bit along the lines of, you, why? We even briefly considered the lengths we might go to with custom roam hacking in order to try illuminating those missing corner pixels. But then we sat down and talked to LG about what was going on here, and the story began to make more sense. See, this isn't just some weird software trick to give the G6's screen a more interesting look. And you can't turn those curved corners back on in software. The screen really is clipped. But it turns out this is about way more than just aesthetics. By avoiding hard right angles, LG is trying to mitigate screen damage caused by drops and other impacts. While the shock wave from such incidents has a bad habit of traveling along the screen, being concentrated in right angle corners and causing breakage, this new design supposedly lessens the risk. And though we're not about to go intentionally dropping our G6, the company's own tests with actual hardware seem to support the idea that this change really is making a difference. While we're quickly finding ourselves won over by the eccentricities of the LG G6's display, it's still not a screen without its issues. Though our measurements confirm that the display is decently bright, it often felt like it was on the dimmer side when actually using the G6, especially outdoors. It also exhibits a cooler color temperature, but short of some preset blue light reduction options for nighttime usage, there's no way to customize that look. Color reap reduction in general isn't superb, and while it's better than many phones, there's a touch of a mold style which this LCD panel very much is not. Oversaturation at the top of the screen start betraying. At least, that's our experience with the AYO. But the phone does claim to offer a wide color gamut with its support for HDR video, including both Dolby Vision and HDR10 formats. LG's Android interface is one of the design, powerful customization and sensible layout. Running a top Android 7.0 Nougat, the AU never feels heavy or that it's forcing you do something like dig hattering the home screen, toggle back on a sick app drawer. Not a fan of having system settings broken up across tabs? You're just two taps away from switching back to Millie all in one list view. LG gives you options upon options, 
and his efforts still made towards making the G6, a foot high risk of seeming weird or just different from every other android you've ever held, feel more like your own. The big questions most users are going to have about the interface aren't these sorts of general and concerns, though. What's the deal with this screen shape, and how does it impact usability? Well, we touched on some of issues already when covering the display, talking about the phone's controls for changing app scaling and their aspect ratios in order to keep things functional and natural looking on 6s 918 screen. That's one part of the equation, but we also see how existing Android functionality takes full advantage of its new screen geometry. Take multi-window for instance. While split screen on phones always ran the risk of feeling more than a bit cramped, the shape of the G6's display helps two apps exist side by side just a bit more comfort. Other apps are specifically designed to tap into all this extra space. We're going to talk about the phone's camera and its software in depth in judgment, but that's a great example evolving for this new 18, 9 world. There, G finds room to squeeze camera roll of recently shot nails up against the side of the screen, while still having more than enough space for camera controls in your live viewfinder. We'd love to see even more apps with such ingenuity and a sense for making the most of available space, but even this is helping us appreciate that, in the right hands, 18, 9 can be more than just a gimmick. All that said, the screen on this phone is tall, and there's a good chance you won't be able to reach it all at once in one-handed operation. That's made slightly more frustrating by the presence of only very sparse explicitly one-hand enhancement are your tweaks. Admittedly, the screen isn't so wide as to cause many problems, but the height can be an issue. You may end up shifting the G6 around in your hand as you go from interacting with Android navigation buttons to pulling down your notification shade. For 2017 Android flagships, there's one question on everyone's mind, if phone running hot new Snapdragon 835. While Sony can be M, and all indicate what Samsung going with for the Galaxy S8, LG isn't quite ready to hop on that same train when it's due for Instead, the G6 runs the Snapdragon 821, a slightly faster version of the insanely popular Snapdragon 820. It's a very solid chip, but it's also decidedly a 2016 model, and in a market where image matters, and the perception of performance is nearly as critical as raw speed test figures, that's a decision that could later come to haunt LG. The company offers legitimate sounding rationales for its choice of processor talking about the lengthy development pipeline, as well as citing energy efficiency reasons. And while that's a valid defense, we can't help but wonder just how much more attractive the G6 might be to shoppers if LG had waited to give it the same chip with the rest of this since top tier hardware. Now, in full closure, we evaluated some early LG G6 handsets, while we're looking at what sure appears to be fine there, for the software tracking could have a pronounced impact on both additive and quantitative performance. Using the phone, everything felt appropriately smooth, whether stretching an app to fill the G6's extra tall screen, or running a pair of them side by side. While that's promising, we can't help but raise out a certain benchmark tests that brought in lower frets than we'd expect from this configuration of hardware. Again, we're not freaking out unit we're running final, commercial software, but we're also curious to see if this odd screen shape and resolution end up negatively impacting performance. LG gives the G6 the expected 4GB of RAM, but we're a little sad to see it stick with just 32GB storage less model. While that's going to be good enough for many users, we love the wiggle room we get with 64GB, and that level's already becoming synonymous with top shelf, power your phones somewhere we're sure the G6 will be. At least there's microSD expansion, and like the G5, LG's back with another unusual side-by-side -side memory sim. That tray is now pitted by a prominent gasket, reminding us of the phone's water-resistant upgrades. There's nothing too surprising about the G6's connectivity as supporting tri-band NTE a carrier aggregation for its cellular radio, 802.11, B, G, N, and DAC for Wi-Fi, as well as NFC and Bluetooth 4.2. We're not really sweating the lack of dual SIM compatibility, though that may matter more to some users. LG would be an early adopter of USB Type-C, and we see the reversible wired interface make an expected return here. 
Not every connectivity option has returned, though, and while the LG G5 could interact with your home electronics over its infrared link, the G6 lacks such a feature. Dual camera smartphones are old new now, and it's seen nearly as many different ways to implement such dual camera systems as there are phones taking advantage of them. Do you merge the data from both sensors? Should they have similar properties, or attempt to each capture unique image information? LG has already zeroed in on the idea of giving its phone's camera with very distinct lenses, one standard or perhaps telephoto, at least by comparison, and one wide angle. That was the case with the G5, as well as the V20, but with both those cameras, the wide angle lens was paired with a lower resolution sensor. For the G6, LG puts its cameras on a closer to even playing field, making both of them full 13 MP components. That's not to say that they perform the same, and beyond the obvious field of view distinction between the standard and wide angle cameras, the former gets a wider f/1.8 aperture, letting in more light and gets to enjoy the presence of optical image stabilization. The wide angle lens, meanwhile, has an f/2.4 aperture and no R. Still, we're just hugely happy to see them come in at the same resolution, and swapping between the two is so fast, it's easy to choose the right camera for any particular shot. The decision to launch the G6 without a removable battery is going to be a controversial one, and with LG as one of the last holdouts offering such a feature on its flagship phones. But all is not lost, as while the G6's battery is baked in, it's also much larger than the 2800 mm component from the G5, now topping out at a very fiblet level 3300 mm. Even better, the G6 now supports wireless charging. Well, that's the case in the USA, though LG has sadly decided that international markets won't appreciate wireless in quite the same way, so they do without. Radio differences between markets, that we get, but varying feature sets enormously frustrating. First the quad back, now this. The same disclaimer applied to the phone's performance pops up, we're not necessarily running final software on our G6 review unit, so things like battery performance, which can take a lot of tweaking to get the most out of, may be less ideal than we're going to see in the final commercial release of the G6. But from our early interactions with the phone, we're still a bit concerned, seeing battery levels drop swiftly throughout the day. Maybe the big screen is eating all that juice, or we're really just dealing with a need for further optimization, but it's a situation that warrants more investigation. With support our quick charge 3.0, recharge times, at least, weren't bad, and we got the G6 back up to full capacity over 100 minutes. Between that and the wireless charging support, it gets a little easier to give the G6 some leeway with its battery life issues, but like we said, even though it be an early speed bump, 